Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're gonna to be talking about this. This is the Retrobit Wireless Sega Saturn controller. Before we get into that though, please do me a favor, like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that. Go into the social media stuff in the description, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, all that sort of stuff, follow me there. And if you don't mind, please check out my new channel called Flying and Eating, which is all about adventuring, flying, eating, and me getting fatter. I'm sure you'll have a good time. Anyway, yes, today we're gonna to be talking about this, the uh, Retrobit Wireless Sega Saturn controller. Now, you'll also notice I have a little bit of an oddity sitting under underneath it, which is the Sega Pluto prototype. Now, I've done whole videos on this, and if you don't know what it is, shame on you, because I've done videos, and that means you didn't watch them, um, which makes me very sad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, if you missed those, in all seriousness, this is a revision of the Sega Saturn that Sega never actually released. There's only two in existence. There's a third one in Texas that's, like, just a mock-up. Uh, but, yeah, there's only two operational units, and one of them's just sitting here right in front of me. Uh, and yes, I've got boxes on it. Trust me, it's fine. Um, but the owner of it, I am not the owner. He loaned it to me so that we could start taking it to conventions and stuff like that, which is going to be a very key reason we're doing this video at all. Uh, although, yes, ultimately, this is a little bit of a review of this controller. Uh, but we'll be testing, uh, testing it on the Pluto. Now, if you're like, dude, I don't have a Pluto. Of course you don't. Nobody does. Uh, I don't even have this thing. Um, but if you don't, and of course you just have a standard Sega Saturn, which we have one over here. This is actually, well, it's not standard. This is the Samsung Saturn. I really just brought this out for the pretties. Hopefully you saw my uh, video about this specifically. I did a rare variance video. My point is, if you have a Sega Saturn of any kind, this device will work with it. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know I actually did a video about this sort of already. This is the wired version of the exact same controller made by Retrobit. I did a video on it a couple of, I think it was a couple of years ago. Man, time really flies. Um, basically what happened at the time is that Retrobit and Sega got together and they decided to make brand new Sega Saturn and Sega Genesis controllers or Mega Drive controllers that were officially licensed and endorsed by Sega. In both cases, they did a wired one and then they did a wireless one. Now, I really, I, I, while I like the idea of a wireless controller, I decided to get wired ones because I'm going to keep it real with you and this still applies. I really don't like the idea of charging my controllers. Whereas just having a cable, I never have to deal with that. I understand the convenience of a wireless controller. Believe me, I do. I get it. But my particular setup, my particular situation, I just don't really need it. The downside of having to charge it does not really outweigh the downside of having to have a cable that really doesn't affect my day. You know what I'm saying? But that said... I don't represent everybody, and I thought it would be only fair to talk about this wireless controller since we have access to it. Now, the reason we have access to it, again, the Sega Pluto comes back in. Um, so, we, like I said, we want to take it to shows and conventions and all that sort of stuff, but the owner, while he's obviously been very cool about that, because here I am sitting here with his rare prototype, um, his big concern with conventions was... I don't know if I want people playing it at the conventions. Uh, only not because he had an issue with them actually enjoying the console. It was really just about like he didn't want people like tugging on the controller and then potentially you know moving the console and causing like the less people physically touching the console, the better, right? So I, I, I just kind of told this story uh, on Discord and uh, a guy named Knight of Dragon, shout out to him, he's a big guy in the Sega Saturn community. He was like, what, that's it? That's the only thing stopping the problem? So he's like, I'll take care of it. So he actually went ahead and bought this controller and donated it specifically to the owner of the Sega Pluto prototype. This isn't mine and this isn't mine, but since it's in my possession, I thought I would check it out. So I want everybody to say thank you to Knight of Dragon because this dude made it possible that you, yes, you watching this video right now, if you go to a convention and the Sega Pluto is there, this is the controller you'll be playing on and it's because Knight of Dragon made that happen. So thank you very much. Now, if you like this controller just as a controller, I know that my buddy Ryan at Castlemania Games sells this. They, he also sells the wired one, which is where I got it originally. Now, with all that out of the way, how does it actually function as a controller? Well, it's pretty cool, actually. So, to full disclosure here, I already opened this up and I, I went ahead and charged it because that's one of the key things you should do anytime you get a new controller that's wireless. Um, this has features in it that obviously the wired version doesn't have, which is that it includes both a, uh, a Bluetooth dongle specifically for the Sega Saturn, which obviously was required because the Saturn was in no way designed to use a, wired, a wireless controller, but they also included a bonus dongle that's USB-based. Now, when I first saw that, I thought, okay, that just makes sense. It's Then you can double as, like, functionality on a PC, right? Well, no, it actually does a little more. It functions on a Mac, which, whatever, if that's how you want to play stuff, that's cool, too. Um, but I was a little surprised to read it's compatible with the Sega Genesis Mini. 
All right, okay, I could see that. It had extra buttons, and I thought, wait a minute, those extra buttons look a lot like Nintendo Switch buttons, and sure enough, it supports the Nintendo Switch. And the other one, it specifically mentions that I was like, really? It, it works on the PlayStation 3, specifically. Not PS4, not PS5, not PS2, PS3. All right, why not? <laughs> so we're going we're going to go like full obscure here, but the coolest thing about the fact that it works on the PS3 and this is going to affect maybe two people on the planet and I'm I'm 50% of that. But people tend to forget that back in the day, Sega actually reissued the Sega Saturn controller specifically for the PlayStation 2. This is an official product they put out. It's very weird seeing this all combined together like that. What that means is because of the PS3 support, if you're out there you're that guy who has Japanese PS3, a 60 gigabyte model, or a hacked PS3. I did a video on that not too long ago. If you're, if you're the guy who has those things and you want to play some of these Japanese titles that were made compatible with this controller and enhanced by it, hey man, Retrobit got you covered. You can do that now. But yes, uh, aside from that very niche group uh, of people, uh, it's just a, it's ultimately it's just a Sega Saturn wireless controller. So let's let's move these boxes, get them out of the way, and actually do a little recreation of an unboxing. Admittedly, we already did this. So open it up. It's got this little piece of tape on it. You get past the cardboard. Now this was the first thing I saw, and this legit stunned me because I was like, wow, this is really nice. It comes in this like really thick, you know, case. I was like, okay, that's got. I mean, like, why don't Sony, Microsoft, what are you doing? Where Nintendo, where are you? How come you're not giving us these great cases? This is like Retrobit and Sega still do, outdoing you guys. But anyway, so yeah, it comes in this. And then when you lift it up, inside it's got this padded little thing that allows you to hold the controller. I didn't even take like the cellophane wrap off the controller yet. I just wanted you guys to see it while it was still there. As mentioned before, it comes with the, uh, the little uh, Bluetooth dongle, which we're going to go ahead and plug into the Pluto. Actually, I should probably do that with two hands. Uh, where is the controller port? There it is. Yeah. Okay, so that's in there. And then the other thing it has, as mentioned before, is the USB dongle, which... You know, we're, we're for the purposes of this video, this, this doesn't, we're not going to do this. But yes, again, it supports a whole wide array of consoles. And then the controller itself, which we're going to go ahead and take out right here. Now, the controller itself, uh, obviously not particularly different from a standard Sega Saturn controller. Granted, this is actually also Retrobit's design. So the color scheme is identical. But, you know, I think there are a few different colors and ways you could get this. Uh, so when you have it, the first thing you want to do, other than take the cellophane off, as I said, is charge it. This is the only hardware flaw in this thing that I see that could have been improved, which is that it uses USB micro. Now, to their credit, they actually do include a USB... I didn't show it, but there's a USB micro cable in that case if you take the, the velvety thing off. Underneath that, there is a, a, a cable. Uh, so you can charge it as you should. Um, it looks like you can actually see the battery through it, so presumably it would be... I'm not going to say easy to replace, but if you needed to, you presumably could do it. My issue with that is that USB Micro itself sucks. It's notorious for breaking very easily. Uh, although when they designed this, I don't think USB-C was really an option. So if they ever do like a revision of this, I hope they replace it with USB-C. So you have to sync the controller, right? Well, if you turn the Pluto on or a standard Sega Saturn, of course, the little dongle right there, I muted the sound, although for a second it shows up. Um, but uh, I down there, the, the dongle will actually fire up and it will turn red. So when that thing is uh, red, it knows that there is some sort of, uh, that there is a thing attached. So you just have to fire up the controller. And in order to sync it up, you just press start. That's it. Uh, I actually thought it would be a lot more convoluted than that. I thought maybe you'd have to do some weird syncing process or whatever, but it seemed to work just fine. Um, and it says in there that's all you have to do. It's, it's not like the modern consoles where you have to like, you know, press two buttons at the same time. and get. I don't know how it is. The Sega and Retrobit are outdoing Microsoft and Sony on this, but they are. But uh, yes, we've got Sonic Jam running here, which I've got out here on display. I also brought up Panzer Dragon Saga because I think somebody said just specifically, how did you not put them in the same video? So this is just for the pretties. Uh, but yeah, we've got Sonic uh, Jam right here. And honestly, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm no expert on controllers specifically. Uh, I'm just a guy checking it out, and I I, I enjoy it, so I'm going to put in some Sonic 2. Granted, I can't really see all that well what I'm doing, but hopefully you guys can. Let me get that out of your way. Um, Game Start. If you guys never played this, it's it's pretty cool, actually. Uh, it was a compilation. This was before this was, like, 
everybody could just easily get these games in any number of formats. Uh, but yeah, Sega released this thing called Sonic Jam that had Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles in it. And it also had this like weird 3D world. The, the interesting thing about their version of Sonic 1 that's on this is it's the version that actually has um, Spin Dash. Sonic 1 famously didn't have Spin Dash, but this, this is the like, other than I think there was a Game Boy build of it, this is like the only version that had it. But yeah, it feels, you know, as I play it, it's responsive. Um, you, you can, it seems nice, nice and clicky. Uh, granted, this is technically, of course, a Genesis game, and so it might be not the, it might be a little bit of an illogical example, but I also can't really see what I'm doing, so I'm sorry, but I think I'm doing okay. Uh, let's, let's, spin dash, there you go, the spin dash right there. Uh, but yeah, you get it. It, I, I think it works just fine. I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to taking it to conventions. I'm gonna die because I can't see what I'm doing. Um, but I look forward to taking it to conventions and letting people play it. So, uh, again, if everybody could give Knight of Doom a, a huge thank you in the comments, that would be great. Uh, and of course, my buddy Roger, who is the owner of this, who's letting us all go on tour and you know check it out so you guys can see it personally. Um, and again, if you like this controller, check it out over at Castlevania Games. He's got them in stock. I would say if you like the Sega Saturn and you like wireless controllers, I don't think it's possible to make a better combination than these two. So yeah, I definitely would approve. Even though, admittedly, I personally would stick to a wired controller, but I can, I can say confidently, if you like a wireless Sega Saturn controller, this is what you should do. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Again, if you could please like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that. Check me out on all the social media stuff, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, and of course, check out my new channel again. Links all down there. Appreciate that. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.